What's going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today and today we have a gift sent sent to us from Megan and Robert. This is from Ironclad. They're in Virginia. We're going to pour these up. We're going to talk about them. A couple that I wouldn't normally drink but a couple that I probably would. We're going to see what Ironclad's all about. Let's try it out. Boom baby. That's a touchdown to Bonte Smith. Sorry I got the birds game going on in the background. Giants suck. Let's go birds. So as I mentioned, this company's name is Ironclad. They're a little bit younger of a distillery, which means I don't expect much out of their whiskey. It means their whiskey is probably a little bit younger as well, but it does seem like they're distilling their own stuff, but we'll talk about it when we get into each individual glass here. We're going to start with the Ironclad Small Batch Bourbon Whiskey. Now they mentioned that this one was aged for two summers, but it doesn't say that it's a straight bourbon whiskey, which means it wasn't aged for two years. While this one over here is a straight bourbon whiskey and this one is aged for two years. So we're gonna start with this one, everybody knows. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Pleasantly surprised. So here's the deal, you guys know I don't like to lie to you guys. When I went online and I searched this whiskey, I decided that I probably wasn't gonna like it the second that I started researching it. A lot of stuff just jumped out to me. This particular one said aged two summers, but it's not a straight bourbon whiskey, which means it's not two years old. So like why say aged two summers? It seemed kind of shady at the time. While they do have a straight bourbon whiskey, which obviously is aged two years, they have a bottled and bond, which we know has to be aged at least four years. So I went on to my Discord and I started talking and this was all before I even opened this up and I said, if I don't like a whiskey that a friend sent to me that I'm supposed to like and I don't want to say bad things about the distillery, what should I say? And we talked back and forth and I would never subject myself to giving a good review on a whiskey I don't like just to, you know, save any of the distillery or anything like that. But I was already prepared to give this entire distillery a bad review. And now after the first sip of our two summer aged whiskey here, I might have to change my mind. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't exceptional by any means, but I wasn't expecting anything from this. I was expecting this to taste bad. Usually, I still get that craft distillery taste. You get that youth on this. Absolutely, it's there. Do not get me wrong. This is only 90 proof when it comes to the whiskey. It doesn't have any heat to it, though. Usually, this younger stuff has a lot of heat to it. You can't really drink it. There are some flavors in this that are absolutely delicious that I didn't expect to get off a 90 proof, less than two-year aged whiskey, and I'm getting some pretty good stuff. Now I will say this, they do say on their website that this particular glass is aged in small charred oak barrels. Now I don't know what small is for them. Is it 20 gallon drums? Is it 15? Is it 10? I don't really know. But smaller allows more of the whiskey to touch more of the contact of the actual oak, which I think is helping this glass out a lot when it comes to a less than two year old whiskey. And I gotta be honest with you, it is a little expensive. I think this is like 70 bucks for a fifth of this, but it's not terrible. I don't know if I would spend $70 on it, but let's take into craft consideration and everything like that. A smaller distillery, they got to grow. They got to make money. Usually the local people will support them because it's bringing in whiskey and it's giving them jobs and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if I would spend $70 on this, but if somebody gifted this to me, at least I'm not mad about it. But listen, that's all we're going to say about this one. Not too bad. 70 bucks good? Probably not. Was it over my expectations? Absolutely. Cheers, y'all. There's like a maple and a coffee note on there. Just flavors that I would never expect. Super sweet, vanilla, some caramels. Like again, for only two years age, these have to be very small barrels is the way they're doing it because that's pretty good for less than two years age. But let's get into the one that is actually two years age. This one's kind of hard to see. I don't like the bottling concept because it's very hard to read. You need to hold it up into a certain light. But this one is also 90 proof, I believe. This one's called Ironclad, but it's their straight bourbon whiskey, which means it is two years old but it's less than four years. And again, they don't tell you, I don't know if maybe because it's the samples, they don't have to tell you exactly how old it is, but I know on regular bottles, they have to tell you under four years old, how old the actual whiskey is. Something floating in this one. It's my glass though, not their whiskey. And I think I messed up earlier. I think I said that these were both 90 proof. This is 90 proof, but this is 95 proof. And this is almost what I feel like this one should taste like. Again, how much different are they? The thing is, this is a four grain mash bill. Corn, wheat, rye, and malted barley. They say this one is a proprietary mash bill. So I don't know if it's the same mash bill. I don't know if they're sourcing this one to get to that two year mark. I don't really know what's happening over here. They're again, just very shady online about the words that they use, which isn't a bad thing. I understand they wanna hide everything that they're doing. That's what a lot of distilleries do. 
I'm just very confused about what's actually in this whiskey. Is it their whiskey? Is it somebody else's whiskey that they're sourcing? I'm not too sure. But this one, I get that youthfulness off of this. I don't get as much of that flavor profile that I get off of this. And it feels like it's copper pot stilled. I don't know why I can tell that. I probably can't. But that's just the feeling that I'm getting on this one. But again, this one just seems a little bit better to me. This one seems, I want to say the word quiet. It's almost this flavor profile, just a little bit more quiet. And again, this one being two summers aged and this one being at least two years old, they're probably not that different. 90 to 95 proof, I thought I would get a little bit more of those flavor profiles. But this one, I don't think I would pick this up for $75. And I think I would be upset if I got this as a gift while this one over here, which I had no expectations for, came out of the woodworks and was pretty good. I don't know what this floaty is, but we're gonna drink it. I will say this though, for 95 proof and 90 proof, both of these drink exceptionally when it comes to drinkability. Neither of these have any real ethanol kick. They both do have that youthful note behind them, which I'm expecting from a craft distillery. But let's talk about these last two behind here. Uh, these aren't normally whiskeys that I would normally drink, so we'll be real quick about those. I don't know what was in that. So again, these aren't two bourbons that I would normally drink, but this is called Sweeter Creations Maple Syrup Cask Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Maple Syrup Casks. And this is AR's Hot Southern Honey Cask Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Chili Infused Honey Barrels. And this is basically what they do. They take their whiskey, they age it in their barrels, they ship those used barrels out to these two specific companies, one for the hot honey, one for the maple syrup. These people age those two things in their own used casks from this company. Then they send the casks back here and then they're gonna age these whiskeys in the twice used casks that used to have whiskey and then had maple syrup or hot honey, whatever it happened to be. But that's my assumption again. They say it's their used casks. Both of these coming in at 95 proof. Both of these are the four grain mash bill. Let's see how these are for, you get it, a flavored whiskey. This maple syrup one, they should just sell as an old fashioned mix. This tastes like an old fashioned that I would enjoy. Super sweet. You get a lot of maple syrup on this, obviously. It's not a bad whiskey by any means. In fact, it tastes much like this one, which I was surprised by. And then you just add a little maple syrup to this. Put a Luxardo cherry in this, put a little cherry juice in this, squeeze an orange on top, put an ice cube, and you literally have a great old fashioned. Not bad. Again, I'm not a big flavored whiskey guy. I don't think I could drink too much of this. It's super, super sweet. But at the end of the day, it's not terrible. But other than that, this is selling for $39.99 for a 375 milliliter. So we'll call it an $80 bottle of whiskey. Again, a little bit overpriced, but that's what you're going to get with craft distilleries. Not my favorite. Definitely better than I thought it was going to be. But at the end of the day, I'm not picking up a bottle of this. And last but not least, we have AR's Hot Southern Honey Casks. Again, same process. They're sending this out to the company. They're aging their honey in it. They're sending it back to this company. They're aging their whiskey in it for six more months. It's the four grain mash bill. Let's try a sip and see what we think. Listen, this company has a lot of bottles on their website, right? They have the four that we're talking about here. They have a couple other flavors when it comes to their flavored whiskey. They have a bottled and bond, which I would absolutely love to try because it might actually be really good compared to everything that we have here. But this bottle right here, this ain't it for me. Now, I know a lot of whiskey drinkers are not big advocates when it comes to flavored whiskey, and I don't hate on flavored whiskey. I think Jack Honey is absolutely fantastic if I want to take a shot of something. Crown Apple is another one that's right up there when I want to take a shot of something, but I'm not normally sipping on it, and that's what I'm doing here right now. This, again, super sweet. It does give you a little bit of spice, but it's not like a rye spice. It's like a straight up chili spice. Mix that with the sweetness on the honey. It just kind of doesn't work, right? It doesn't blend well together, at least for my particular palate. Again, this is the worst one that I've had of these four. This one right here surprised me a lot. This one I thought was going to be worse, but at the end of the day, I think this was worse than this and I was expecting it to be better. I want to try the bottled and bond. This, it's like an old fashioned in a glass. And then this one right here just would not recommend. And that's where we're going to leave you for today. I don't even know if I can finish this one right now, but let's try it out. We're going to leave that right there for right now, but make sure you check out my video, five holiday gift ideas for the whiskey lover in your life for an opportunity to win some amazing prizes. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Click that like, click that subscribe button. Come chat with us 24 seven on discord and check out our Patreon for some cool background stuff as well. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers y'all. Spicy.